Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. So this weekend sees us enter 2023. It's another new year, which means a load of good intentions for better practice going forward. And as we see every year, there's gonna be a whopping great number of bass players looking for some advice on how to get started with that good old chestnut, slap bass. Now, I've got a ton of slap videos here on the channel from absolute beginner stuff all the way through to advanced riffs and technique. But one thing that we don't have is one simple killer riff that covers the basics and gets you on your feet. Many famous and popular slap riffs are actually fairly tricky for beginners. It's really difficult to make any kind of list of really easy slap riffs. The riff that I'm gonna show you today, I've written specifically for this lesson and it allows you to practice the basic techniques of both slapping and popping, your note control in the fretting hand, a clean technique by way of muting, and your hammer-ons. It's an incredibly simple riff from a musical standpoint, but it's packed with content for subtle, focused practice. So the riff sounds like this. Okay, so let's have a look at the basic notes and rhythms in here. So we've got this basic first bar and then we repeat it three times with some uh, basic variations in there. So for the first bar, we start on an open E string, played twice, so that's two eighth notes, one and. First note cut short, and the second one for a full eighth note. But I'll get back to that in a minute. This, so this is all about the note control. Then for B2, we've got a rest, so one and two. Then we repeat our first beat on three, so one and two and three and. And then in beat four for the final two sixteenth notes, we have this hammer on. We slap the D there at the fifth fret of the A string and we hammer on at the E at the seventh fret. Okay, very simple. So that's gonna be on the last two sixteenth notes. So we've got four E and A. Okay, so four E and A. Okay, so all of that slowly. One and two and three and four E and A. Okay, so that's the counting of it, just in case you can't get it by ear. So one and two and three and four E and A. Okay, so we could play that round around. One and two and three and four E and A. One and two and three and four E and A. Now, I know many of you are probably not going to want to get too much into the counting of this and you're going to want to, you know, feel it, but when you're actually learning riffs like this, especially, you know, funk bass lines, things like that, it can help to really, you know, focus in on the counting because it's going to give you more accuracy. So when you start playing along to, let's say, the drum track here, if you're, you know, a little bit off with certain parts or rushing certain parts, Counting it is going to really focus in on the timing and you're going to be, uh, well, you're just going to be a lot better rhythmically. Okay, so for the next three bars, we've got pretty much the same thing, but we just replace the hammer on from the D to the E with something else. So for the second bar, we're going to replace that with, so that's the F sharp to the G, fourth fret to the fifth fret on the D string. We're going to pop that with the first finger. Pop and hammer on, okay? So I'm just using first and second fingers there. Okay, so first two bars, one and two and. The third bar is just a repeat of the first bar. And then for the fourth bar, we replace that D to E with D to E an octave higher. So seventh fret to ninth fret on the G string popping the first note and hammering on. So you can use the first to the third fret, uh, finger. <laughs> so that's the index and the ring finger there for that, uh, for that hammer on, so. So that's all the notes in the riff. So let's just try through that slowly. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. and you can just work round and round on that. So from a technical standpoint, we've got a few things to consider. First, we have the slap and pop techniques in the right hand. Now, there are a few slaps in here. So we've got the, this open E string and you'll notice here that I'm actually bouncing the thumb 
which is a very common way of slapping. And, uh, you know, for most of you that are very new to slapping, that's probably going to be the way that you're going to be trying to, uh, trying to do it. So um, you'll see this bounce, this bounce action where we basically bounce the thumb onto the string and just whip it off. So it's just a whipping action, all done with the rotation of the wrist and a little bit of the forearm. Okay, uh, you'll see people like Flea, uh, Mark King, well, well, I mean, pretty much <laughs> most slappers uh, play like this. But you might also see people like Victor Wooten and Larry Graham playing more of a rest stroke where they actually strike through the string. And you get a lot more body with that, uh, with that action. And also it facilitates double thumbing when you get a little bit more advanced. But um, you know, completely down to you which way you want to play, whether you want the bounce. If you're finding the bounce too difficult at first, because some people find the action a little bit tricky, then you might actually try the, uh, the rest stroke. Try playing through the string. Just strike the string with the side edge of the thumb and come to rest on the A string. You know, try that. That's, <laughs> that is an option. So that's the slapping action, but we also have the popping action. And that's very straightforward. Just take the first finger, place it under the string. So let's say the G string there. Raise it up a little bit using a curled finger and then just bring it up and let it go. You don't want to bring it up too much. Don't pull it right out of the body. It's just a slight movement with the finger. Just a, a twisting action in the wrist just to get that pop there, okay? And that's it. That's the thumb and the, uh, and the finger slap and pop. Next up, we have the technique and positioning of the fretting hand. Now, this is going to play a huge role in the note durations and note control coming up. Many beginners think that slap bass is all about the slapping hand, but the fretting hand plays an equal, if not more important role in many different ways. So let's take a look at our hand positioning, and we're going to use something that I've talked about many times on this channel, a technique that I've named home position. And this is a great default starting and all round position for the fretting hand in whatever style, and it allows us to start from a position of absolute silence. So take the thumb of the fretting hand, place it in the back of the neck, somewhere between this edge and and this edge, so just there in the middle. Then you want to bring the fingers down and the uh, you want these fingers parallel to the strings. We don't want to be coming in at an angle like this or like this. Which for the default position, you want them parallel. So use the uh, second and third fingers as a gauge for this. Look at those frets, see where they're running and just get those fingers lined up there. So then what we need to do is take that first finger and then just lay it lightly across the A, D, and G strings. So I'm doing this at the fifth fret so that we're in position uh, for all of this, all that stuff. So first finger there in, uh, in position of the fifth fret, but you know, depending on the line, you know, you're gonna have it in different places. This is just for this example. So that finger's there and you'll notice that if you were to play down through those, you'd get some harmonics. Then take the second, third, and fourth fingers and then just bring those down to lay across all of the strings. So the fingers are probably pr protruding a little bit past the uh, edge of the neck there. And then you'll notice that we get complete dead notes. So that's just ghost notes. Okay, so we've got a complete position of silence here. No matter what happens, we're not going to get any bashes or anything like that. It's all a very safe quiet position. So now let's play an open E string. So we're going to slap this note. So remember the position there, you've got that first finger laid there across A, D and G strings and then these others coming down. When you go to strike that open E string, you simultaneously slap and raise these fingers here, the second, third and fourth fingers. The first finger stays in position, okay? So, so We've got this motion going on. The first finger stays in position, just lightly laid across those uh, strings, and this hand is moving up and down. When we do this, we're keeping the A, D, and G string locked down. We're not gonna get any noise out of there, okay? So the, we've isolated the E string. Okay, so we do that simultaneously. Bring the fingers up as we slap down, okay? Then, when you want to cut that note off, when you wanna choke it off, we just bring those fingers back down. Okay, so that's the two motions. We've either got the slap there, the strike of the string, or we've got the choking. And then if you want to play something like ghost notes, so when you have that kind of, uh, 
you know, whatever you're going to be doing with it, you know, any of that kind of ghost note action, we don't have to worry about this hand. It's all just taken care of. So as practice in getting a bit of note control with this home position, just try playing eighth note on, eighth note off with that open E string. Okay, so we're gonna have one and two and three and four and, okay? One, then choke on and, two, choke on and. One and, two and, three and, four. And. So you want to have good control over all of the note durations in any bass line that you play. And, you know, so far we've only just played eighth note on, eighth note off. But as an extreme example, you could try playing very short staccato notes. So remember, it's all in this hand. It's nothing to do with this hand. It's all in the fretting hand. So just raise that hand and... It's just a little raise and drop of those fingers. Just try getting those very short staccato notes. One, two, and three, and four, and one. And really focus in on getting a very short uh, attacking note. So you should now have a little better note control. So now we can look at those first two eighth notes in the, uh, in the riff and use the technique that we've just looked at. So for the first note, we're playing a short staccato note. So, okay, so strike the string, we've raised that hand and just dropped it straight back down. That's the first note. And then the second one, we play a full eighth note. So that's the motion. Ba -ba, ba -ba. And then you're bringing that hand down on beat two. One and two. One and two. One and two. One and two. Okay? Now, I know that this looks like I'm getting really pedantic with it, but one thing you'll notice with beginners, or I notice with beginners, is that the note control usually isn't quite there. So, you can end up with something like that, you know, just basic, you know, held notes. The subtlety there in the staccato note, is often not there. So you really want to focus on getting that short attack and then the longer, more breathing uh, note for the second one. And then have a lot of accuracy on the choke on beat two. One and two, okay? So it's all about accuracy in the choke as well as the actual strike of the note. And now let's have a look at the hammer-ons. So remember we were in position with this home position to start and we had the uh, first finger over that, uh, hovering pretty much over that fifth fret and there's those first two notes. And then we have this hammer-on from the D to the E. So I'm using the first finger and fourth fingers for this move. So we're in this position, the finger is already there on that fifth fret and we just Raise those uh, fingers, the second, third, and fourth fingers. We press down the note simultaneously, not one and then the other, it's all together, and slap that D. Then just bring that fourth finger down on the uh, E. Okay? Obviously, as soon as you've played that, then you're gonna come back to the open E again for the next bar, and you're gonna bring the fingers back into that home position, so. One thing to bear in mind with the hammer-ons is that the hammered note wants to be pretty much of equal volume with the first one, so. So for that D to the E, the E wants to be as close as you can get it to the volume of the uh, the D that you struck. Now, for a lot of you, if you're a beginner, you know, if your hands just aren't strong enough yet, or, you know, your technique's not there, you might find that that second note just doesn't really register in the same way, so you might have to op overcompensate a little. But don't get too scrappy with it. If you try overcompensating, sometimes your technique can go out of the window. But, um... You know, just push down a little bit harder to try and bring it through. And I would definitely say use the fourth finger in this position there uh, rather than the third finger simply because it, it makes for a much cleaner technique there when we're looking with, at the uh, this home position. Okay? Um, 
you'll get used to this kind of flappy hand motion, which is pretty much what we're doing with the hammer on. Now, when you move to the pops, that F sharp to G, that's very simple, that's just first and second finger. Um, but one thing I would say is that you can actually, it's, uh, it's useful to bring around the thumb there to mute the E string because we're not going to have the benefit of, uh, of these other fingers to do all the choking. So when I move to the F sharp to the G, I'm actually bringing the thumb around. Okay, same thing again up on that D to the E there, 7th to 9th fret on the G string. I'm actually using the 1st and 3rd fingers there as I bring up the thumb because it's a lot harder to hammer on with the 4th finger. It's almost impossible to do it with the 4th finger um, with the thumb coming around to do the muting. And also, when you're in these upper areas, you're more likely to use the 1st to 3rd finger in that 3 fret span. Down here, it's just a lot better for your actual finger positioning to have them over a three fret span, you know. So, use that thumb, don't worry about keeping it down here all the time, bring it round so that we can mute off that E string. So, bearing all of that in mind, let's just have another look at that riff played very slowly. So we've got one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four. So, play through that riff really slowly, focusing in on all of the subtleties of that technique. It's not just a riff to learn and get the notes under your fingers. There's a lot more to it than that. It's not just about open E, you know, D to E. Forget focusing just on the notes. It's all about these subtleties. Focus on that note duration. Are you getting that staccato note in there correctly? Hammer-ons is that second note of equal volume. You know, the, the actual muting of the uh, open strings, you know, when you're not using them. Are you getting any residual noise? It's all of that stuff that's gonna make you just sound playing better and make your slap playing sound like slap playing. When you very first start out playing slap, it's really easy for it to just sound like a bangy mess. You know, <laughs> you just end up whacking things and it just sounds like really hard picking. It's all of these little subtleties in the notes you know, these shorter notes, this the attack in the pops, you know, that kind of sound, that sharp attack, the short note duration on the pop, all of that stuff is going to be the thing uh, that you're listening uh, for in the playing of, you know, guys like Flea. When you hear that, you know, those kind of lines, it's you know, I know that he looks like he's just flailing away a lot of the time, really whacking the hell out of the bass, but there's a lot of good technique in there. It's, it's all of those subtleties in there that make it sound good. So that's our simple, perfect starter riff for bass. Remember, there are a ton of slap bass lessons over at the Talking Bass website, as well as the huge Simple Steps to Slap Bass course. So just follow the link in the info below. Also, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week.